Today I'm going to show you how to play any major chord on the tenor banjo anywhere on the neck. My name is Jack Ray from Jazz Banjo Academy. Welcome to this video on how to play movable major chord shapes. So before we talk about how we're going to move these shapes around the neck, let's learn the actual forms themselves. We'll start with C major form 1. This is an open position, leaving our bottom two strings open. Our first fingers on the second fret of the D string, and our third fingers on the third fret of the A string. Now we have C major form three. Our first fingers on the fourth fret of the C string. We're barring our second finger of the G and D string, that's on the fifth fret, and our pinkies on the seventh fret of the A string. Now we have C major form five. We have our first finger on the 7th fret of the C string, our 3rd finger on the ninth fret of the G string, and then our pinky is barred across the 10th fret of the D and A string. And the last one I want to show you is C major form 1 again, but past the 12th fret so that we're not using any open strings. So we have our first finger barring over all 4 strings there, we also have our ring finger, our 3rd finger, on the 14th fret of the D string, and our pinky on the 15th fret of the A string. Now the reason I showed you two different ways to play C major form 1 is crucial to this lesson, because one of them is a shape we can move around the neck without changing the order of our fingers, and another one will sound completely different if we move that shape even by one fret. So to fully understand how to move some of these shapes around on the tenor banjo, we need to talk about a little bit of music theory. Now, the first thing I want you to understand is that there are 12 notes in Western music, which is a great thing to think about. Every song you've heard in a Western genre is made up of just 12 notes. It's amazing how much music we can get out of just the 12 notes. Most songs don't even use all 12. So we have 12 notes, but we only use seven letter names to identify them. So that's what's called our musical alphabet, and it's the same as the English alphabet. It goes from A, but it stops at G. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. That's it. So we have an open A string, so we'll play it from there. Those are all the different letter names we have in Western music. But like I said, we have 12 different notes. So we put notes in between those letter names, and we call them either a sharp or a flat. So between A and B, what's between open and our second fret, it's the first fret. Now we call that note either A sharp or B flat. We'll talk about why we call it two different names in a second. After that we go from B to C. There's no sharp or flat between B or C or E and F. After C we're back, we're going up to our C sharp or it's D flat. D, D sharp or E flat. E, remember there's no sharp between E and F so we go straight up to F on our 8th fret. F sharp or G flat. G, G sharp or A flat. And we come back to A on our 12th fret. So you can hear that is what's called an octave. You might have two dots there on your 12th fret, indicating that that's where not only the natural harmonic sits, but also that the cycle starts again. We've gone through all our 12 notes. Played all 12 notes. So it starts again. We'd have A sharp up here. B, C. So as I mentioned before, it's a sharp or B flat, C sharp or D flat, it depends on the context. You don't really need to understand yet as to why we call something A sharp and something B flat, but it's important to understand that they are the same pitch. If I just play you this note without any context or other notes surrounding it, you won't be able to tell me whether it's the note A sharp or B flat. Their pitch is the same, but we have two different spellings. In English, we have the same concept with a homophone, right? So the word C. Without any context, you don't know what I mean. You don't know whether I'm saying see something, visualize it, see it with your eyes, or am I talking about a large body of water? So when I put all those 12 notes together, that's what we call our chromatic scale. It's all the notes we used in Western music lined up perfectly in order. You can start it from any note, it's still called the chromatic scale. So you can start it from B to B, that would be a chromatic scale. C to C, chromatic scale. Now the space between any two notes is what's known as an interval and the space between each of the notes in the chromatic scale is the smallest interval we use in Western music. It's called a half step or a semitone. And nicely on the tenor banjo, that's one fret. 
right? So every time we're moving up one note in our chromatic scale, we're moving up one fret. Now, how is this useful when we're talking about moving our major chord shapes around? Let me show you. This is a C chord, right? We know it's form three, but essentially it's C. So if we keep this exact same shape, we move everything up one fret, we now have C sharp major. We go back to our C, move everything down one fret, that's B major. We're gonna move everything down two frets, B major goes down to B flat major. All of a sudden we have B flat major form three. I haven't moved the order or relationship in my fingers at all. It's all exactly the same chord shape. So say we took C major form five, and then we want to play A flat major form five, right? Or we, we know we can follow it down our chromatic scale, remembering each note in that chromatic scale is going to be one fret lower if we're going down, one fret higher if we're going up. So we're at C, we're going to go down to A flat, we're going C, what comes before C in it? B. Before that, B flat, could have been A sharp, but we're moving down. A goes down to A flat. Now why did I show you two different ways to play C major form one? This is one of the first chords we probably learnt on the tenor banjo. It's very easy, we only use two fingers. But the thing about this chord shape, because we're using open strings, if we shift this up, or down, it no longer sounds like a major chord, right? Only this one is a major chord. And that's because when we're shifting chords that use open strings, these pitches don't get shifted, right? Those are exactly the same notes. So that's why, when we're up here, if we want to make the same sound but one octave higher, we cover those two with our first finger on the twelfth fret. And now we're not using any open strings, which means we have a movable shape for C major form 1. So if I want to play B major form 1, just move it down one fret. B flat major, A major, A flat major. Now if you want to explore this concept further with our minor triads, diminished triads, augmented triads, uh, I've just written an ebook for the tenor banjo on triads, you can find that on our website, I'll link that below. Also if you sign up for our mailing list, I'll send you a PDF for what we've covered in this lesson. Thanks for watching, my name is Jack Ray from Jazz Banjo Academy. Please click subscribe, click like, and we'll see you again soon.